Hello lovely people, I have come into the theatre a little bit early today um, because I fancied making a video but the video that everyone told me to make via my Instagram when I asked was a roll call video which I had previously never heard of this tag, if you can call it a tag broadwayworld.com do it on their youtube channel so i watched about 10 of them and i fell down that rabbit hole for a little while and it's a tag or challenge of sorts where an actor is asked a question and they have to answer it with one of the roles that they have played and the story behind why they have picked that role so instead of badly explaining this further i'm just gonna dive right in i should also say usually they play this in front of a wall where they have the names of all of the parts that they've ever played behind them i don't have that and I don't have anything to write on. Like I don't have any sticky notes or anything, which is very unlike me. Or maybe I'll just show you a picture as I pick them. Let's just go, let's just do this. I'm overthinking it. Role you felt sexiest in. It's a toss up between Wednesday and Veronica, but I think I'm gonna have to go with Veronica simply because of Dead Girl Walking and the reaction that that got every night on stage. For those of you that don't know, Dead Girl Walking is a musical answer to a sex scene. It's a song in which teenage sex is had. And in part of the song, there's a lyric that says, touch me there and there and there, no more talking. And during that bit, my shirt would come open and I'd be wearing a Veronica blue bra. Although on one night I forgot to change my bra and it was definitely like a very emerald green bra um, to which J Jamie like opened my top and was like, what? <laughs> but nothing makes you feel sexier than having 850 people cheer and scream loudly as your top comes open to reveal your bra bound boobs. The role your family loves the most, it has to be Brenda Payne because Brenda Payne is a character from the Christmas Saurus which is a book my brother wrote and when we did that production at the Hammersmith Apollo in Christmas of 2017 it was a family affair. It was a book my brother wrote and my brother was in it. My brother's wife Giovanna was in it. I was in it. Uh, Matt Willis from Busted was in it. Harry Judd was in it. Like there was just a whole group of family and family friends all in one production. So my family who weren't in the show obviously loved coming to see the show because it was kind of like spending Christmas together in that way. <laughs> Role I was wrong for. I think a lot of people watching this might argue that most roles I've played I was wrong for. But one that springs to mind was Isabel in a workshop that I did called Only the Brave. I think it was a two week workshop that I did in like 2014, 2015. I was playing a 14, 15 year old girl from France during World War II and none of that screams me. <laughs> it was an amazing show to be part of, the music was unreal. Um, I was acting opposite Jerome Prodon and it was a workshop, it wasn't a full on production and usually the people cast in workshops aren't necessarily right to play the role when it transcends the workshop and goes on to bigger and better things. Role that you want to play again. Again, my answer is from a workshop that I did. It was Eric Whittaker's Paradise Lost and it was, again, a two week workshop, I think. And through that, I met and worked with Lucy Jones for the first time, Nathan Amzai for the first time. Uh, Michael Colborn was in it, who we were doing Les Mis in the evening, so we were doing the workshop together during the day and then going to Les Mis together in the evening. Um, so it was just a really fun workshop. And again, the music was incredible. If you've ever heard anything of Eric Whittaker's stuff, it, you can just imagine what Paradise Lost was like. And I was playing an angel called Aya, who was very shy, but very bright. So much of the music was like really delicate, close harmonies. There was a song called Sleep. It was just, I have a recording of it somewhere and it was just, beautiful <laughs> because it was just a workshop, I would love to revisit Aya and Paradise Lost. Role that was most like me. All of my characters haven't been very much like me. Most of them have been very outlandish characters, like, like Wednesday and Veronica and Brenda. I think I'm gonna have to say Fontaine. Obviously I'm not a mother and uh, I've never been through half the trauma and terrible things that Fontaine has gone through, but 
at the core of things like especially when she's singing i dreamed a dream she is a, a heart a hopeless romantic and she sings lyrics like and still i dream he'll come to me that we will live the years together and so much of that is about sort of uh thinking of a future and what that future could be and uh being frustrated that life hasn't turned out the way that she expected it to uh and that feels very me i feel like i think very far ahead into the future and then i get frustrated when things don't go according to plan i feel like i'm answering this question like the character that i want to be the most like <laughs> i want to have fontaine's resilience and her resourcefulness uh because you get to a point in fontaine's story and like fontaine's arrest where you're sat there looking at her going how was she still standing despite everything she's been through she never gives up regardless of what life throws at her something that resonates with me and that's something that i very much aspire to be like so i'm gonna say fontaine role that was most unlike me truly truly scrumptious i love playing her and i had so much fun playing her she's very feisty she's very argumentative she's very hot-headed like most of the interactions between her and caractacus were arguments <laughs> she's also incredibly responsible and she takes on tasks and challenges that if i were faced with i'd be like someone else can deal with that 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 ain't for me that's not my that's not my business role i could do in my sleep eponine purely because i played that part 959 times and when you've done something that much i mean they say you need to do something three times in order to, for your brain to like create that connection and to remember it um so 959 times was overkill so that is just a role my brain is never gonna forget regardless of how much time has passed since the last show i ever performed as eponine <laughs> role that was the most fun I'm gonna say Emily from The Christmas Carol. It was a one night concert that we did at the Lyceum Theatre on a Sunday in 2016. And I just had a blast. It was so much fun. It was kind of a pressure free concert because we all had our scores and our lines in front of us. I got to work with some amazing people like Robert Lindsay and Giovanna was in it. And uh, I made some lifelong friends, Matt McDonald and Paul Bradshaw and Rebecca Riddout. They were in it and they are friends for life now and not only was it a christmas carol which is a great classic story in of itself but the music was by alan menken so i was kind of living all kinds of dreams within that show roll with the best costume truly without a doubt had my favorite costume that i've ever worn in any show that i've ever been in it was this two-piece blue kind of suit but the trousers were culottes so they were like really big and baggy and swishy but they were then high-waisted and tight-fitted around the waist uh, and I had a little parasol as well and a hat I just I loved it I lived my best life wearing that costume but I, I only ever wore it for Toot Sweets. Toot Sweets is one number in the whole of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang it's about six minutes long seven minutes long and I literally wore that costume for that number and that was it. Role that changed me the most I'm gonna say Eponine again because I played Eponine from the ages of 20 to 20 four if you include when i was in it in dubai um and i felt like they were just very formative years in anyone's life really but they felt like formative years in my life in particular um because the way that you think from when you're 20 to when you're 24 just very different uh so it felt like i kind of grew up playing eponine the role you wish more people saw cinderella I did the workshop of Andrew Lloyd Webber's new version of Cinderella at the beginning of the year and it was uh, an invite only workshop um, so the only people that got to see it were people that Andrew Lloyd Webber invited along himself which is how we ended up performing in front of Michael Caine, Sheridan Smith, Joan Collins, Richard Curtis, like the audiences were star studded and crazy but we only did four performances I think in the end and I just wish we'd done it for longer and that more people could have gone to see it because it was just so much fun. Role that made you feel like a badass. I'm gonna say Graham from But I'm a Cheerleader. Graham is just such a cool character. She just exudes coolness. <laughs> the reason I played Graham was in a workshop for MT Fest where we had to uh, put on a performance or four performances of But I'm a Cheerleader with only 12 hours to rehearse. So we did two six hour days on a Saturday and a Sunday and then we performed it from Monday through Wednesday, two on Wednesday. It was intense. But the thing I loved about Graham is that it's everyone else around her who's telling her that she's going to grow out of who she thinks she is. But she's like, 
sure i'm just gonna go along with this because you're my parents telling me this and you know i'm like 16 17 so i kind of have no choice but to go along with it but you're wrong <laughs> and every line she has exudes that confidence in herself and so i just kind of felt like a massive badass when i was on the stage playing graham <laughs> role that scared the hell out of me veronica hands down heather scared the hell out of me for many reasons one of them being that it was the biggest role i would have played up to that point i had never played a role that had sung that much in a show before i'd never led a company before and it was a big deal and it was a scary deal <laughs> so i felt like there was a lot of pressure to deliver in that respect but then also heathers came with a very large fan base and a very dedicated fan base and a very loud fan base and a very opinionated fan base uh which is amazing when they like you <laughs> before i had even played the role there was already a lot of opinions flying about online about whether i was right for the role or not and uh what i was going to be like playing the role and uh it was it was terrifying role that kicked my ass or ass as i would say <laughs> i'm gonna say wednesday wednesday was uh one of the biggest roles i played up till that point um so she was a little bit daunting but the thing about wednesday and the adams family is that we were doing a weekly tour so we would only be at each venue for a week and spending your days off moving the biggest move that we did was from truro to nottingham which was a seven hour train journey so we all kind of felt like we were living out of suitcases and that we never got to go home because when you're doing a weekly tour you get a day off and a day to travel between each week so we do tuesday to saturday shows and then have sunday monday so one would be a day off one would be a travel day and you could choose which was which but it meant that if you went home you'd be traveling on both days so you travel home spend the day there and then the next day travel to the venue so you just constantly felt like you were on a train and if it wasn't for scott and oliver on that tour i think i would have gone a little bit crazy they both kept me very very sane and i am so grateful that i had them with me for that tour and finally the role that made you feel like a star it has to be beth from war of the worlds the war of the worlds is run not like a theater tour but like a rock tour so the cast have their own tour bus that had bunk beds and snacks and tea and coffee we'd be put up in the swankiest of hotels like wherever jeff wayne stayed jeff wayne was the um the composer of the war of the worlds wherever he stayed we stayed so we were in like these ridiculous five-star swanky hotels that i will never stay stay in again <laughs> i mean fingers crossed one day maybe but some of them were a little bit out of my price range and we were playing arenas so we'd be playing to like twenty thousand people every night and there was no way you couldn't be on that tour and not at some point feel like a star thank you to everyone who suggested that i do the roll call tag challenge broadwayworld.com thing because that was really fun i really enjoyed that um and i hope you enjoyed it too it is now almost five o'clock i have an hour and 15 minutes before i need to be on stage so i'm now going to edit this video and hopefully have it up by tomorrow morning maybe tonight depends how quick i am at editing see you very soon Mwah.